On the other side of the race for Congress, our next guest is one of four Republicans looking to the August 14th primary. Lisa Wilson Foley is a businesswoman from Simsbury who owns several different businesses involving physical therapy and rehab and sports and various aspects of health care. And her website says she and her family employ more than 1,500 people in 14 of the 41 towns of the 5th District. Lisa, thanks for being here. Great to be here. Thanks. Let's just start off. I mean, you know, we've been talking, of course, I'll show about the Twardy report and um, your reaction to it. No surprise. Um, an internal investigation paid for by the campaign um, showed nothing wrong. So I'm sitting here. I didn't have any other expectations. So, so you thought uh, you, you didn't use the word whitewash, but are you saying it, it is essentially a whitewash? Well, uh, you know, again, it was Chris Donovan hiring the person he wanted to hire, bringing them in, um, letting him speak to the people that, you know, they spoke to, which weren't the high level um, people involved in the investigation. So I wasn't surprised that they didn't show any, any problems. Did you talk to voters at all? Do you get a sense that, what do you think the reaction is going to be in the district to this report? Because they're really hoping that this might answer a lot of the questions. Yeah, no, I have not talked to voters about um, that campaign. You know, I'm really focused in on the Republican primary. And so this is a little bit of a sideshow, and I certainly have paid attention and, and watched it, but it's not something that voters are, are addressing with me, um, and it's not something that I'm actually talking to them about. You know, your own um, campaign has had a little tinge of controversy. I mean, are voters asking you about that and about John Rowland's involvement? And no, they aren't. You know, it is a political um, thing. Obviously, my opponents, you know, want to bring it up, and the media is very interested in it. If it wasn't John Rowland, um, no one would have a bit of interest in having a volunteer work for you and then having your husband hiring that, that volunteer to work for them. It would be a non-issue. But it's John Rowland, and I understand that makes it media, um, interest of the media. Do you now wish that um, he were not involved? Well, he's not involved anymore. I mean, he stepped down from his volunteer capacity, and the contract with my husband ended. Um, he did a very good job for my husband. Uh, it's very well documented. Many people were involved in that, his role um, with the company. But it was over, and he was paid for the job that he did. Did he, did he do a good job for you as well? When he was volunteering, yes. You know, I used him for, you know, he came to a couple of fundraisers. He made a couple of calls. Um, occasionally before a media thing, you know, he gave me some suggestions. But he didn't have a huge role with my campaign. I think that was uh, misrepresented. So what are voters, if they're not interested in, in what's going on in either of these <laughs> in investigations or the controversy swirling around these campaigns, what are the voters interested in in your district? It's, it really is about the economy and jobs. It hasn't changed from when I got in over a year ago into this race. And health care is also, you know, a, a part of that equation, but people are fearful that they are reducing their hours. And when they had a 40-hour position, now it's a 30-hour position. They're concerned about their kids that just graduated in May, don't have jobs, and don't even have expectations of jobs um, for the next year. So those are the things that I um, continually hear out on, on the campaign trail. And I believe my background on um, being in having been a job creator for 20 years. I've created 15 different companies, different entities, and some businesses have gone on to become national companies. So I do understand what it takes to create a job, and I also understand how the government should get out of the way or at least create a fertile environment. Um, but that's not happening. You mentioned health care, and of course we had the big health care decision. And I'm interested in, in what you think of it and, and how will it affect um, you and your business and, and the people who come to your businesses? Well, um, you know, it was ruled constitutional at least to have the tax in there. Um, certainly that doesn't make it good policy from my standpoint. I have businesses that I speak with that say, you know what, Lisa, it, dis it gives me a lack of incentive to grow. If I get to 49 employees, I'm almost better off staying small. Mm -hmm. So instead of creating companies that will then grow um, and create more jobs, it, it takes that incentive away. Um, my costs for insurance uh, continue to rise, and this certainly isn't going to, to stop that tide. Um, I'm scared that our health care is going to become more government controlled, more government mandated. I'm a big believer that market forces and consumer preferences are the best way to deal with health care. Won't it provide maybe more opportunities for people to use your services? You know, there is that, that piece that maybe we'll get more health care jobs. But if all we're getting are more health care jobs paid for with less money, I mean, Medicare is taking a $500 billion cut. Physicians are starting to say, I'm not going to take those patients. 
people are saying, I'm not going to go into medicine because the risk and the cost of going into medical um, education is so high. And if the payment is going to be so low, it's not worth um, these really smart kids to go into that profession. Are there parts of the health care law that you do like? Sure, yeah, there are. And you know what, people do talk about the pieces of it that they do like. Um, they love being able to keep their kids on insurance until they're 26. Um, I know I was out of the house uh, at 22 and I was, had my own insurance um, at that time, but things have changed. Um, the other thing is pre-existing conditions. Uh, certainly, we want to make sure that health care, you can, you know, if you have diabetes or, or chronic disease, that you can get health care insurance. So those are two in, in particular that I, I do believe that most citizens like. And how do you deal with the in uninsured? I mean, it still is a problem. It is a problem. And, you know, I have a background in public health. I care about people getting insured. But, you know, if we put health care on a socialist pattern and we start becoming more of a conveyor belt of health care, it's not going to be um, improved quality. Right now, under Obamacare, my therapist, my physical therapist, tell me we're getting really good at quality paperwork, but we're having less time for quality patient care. You know, we need to do it, but we need to do it with a bipartisan solution, bringing in all the stakeholders, and maybe it's not going to be done at the midnight at 2,700 page document. There's ways to do it, but I think we need to make sure that we take into account the cost drivers, which we really didn't do under Obamacare. One, one thing back on Roland, you, you, if I've heard you right, you've spoken fairly strongly that it will not have an impact on your campaign ultimately. Have you, have you talked to Roland about that? Why, why do you say that, first of all, and have you talked to Roland extensively uh, and what backs up your fairly strong statements that this will blow over? Uh, no, I haven't talked to John Roland. Remember, this is about my husband's company. And you can hire whoever you want to, even if they're volunteering for your wife's campaign. What had to be proved and has been proven, I believe, is that he did a job that was um, involved with lots of people, lots of documentation, reports, contracts, um, specific jobs that he did for my husband's company. And that's really all that's been investigated. And I believe that's you know, the truth and the facts are going to play out. And when are we going to get a conclusion to this? I'm sorry. You're, that's a great question, and I would love it to come out sooner rather than later. But I cannot um, mandate uh, the federal authorities to, to, to do that in a timely fashion. All right. We appreciate you all being here. I'm sorry we ran out of time so quickly. Thanks, Lisa, for being here. Definitely. Coming up, I'm sorry, and don't forget if you missed something on The Real Story, you can now watch it online by going to ctnow.com. You can also catch us on YouTube. Thanks for watching this week's edition of The Real Story. We'll see you here again next week.